Hello. Let us try to understand designing a simple line following robot. Before that, let us recapitulate some of the basics those have been covered on a practical electronics part 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Here we find that there is a transistor and we have a LED and then LED is always connected in series with a resistor and finally connected to the power supply of a 6 volt battery and then we have the base drive by a switch here, push switch with a 10k resistor in series. Uh, what we notice that while we try to simulate this and when we press this what we notice the LED glows. How? It is being indicated by the arrows. Arrows meaning that the current flows from the battery this way, it goes this way and then passes this way. If we stop this path, if we close this path, the current does not flow in the base circuit, the current cannot flow in the collector emitter circuit. This is called collector, this is emitter and this is base. So this is the basic fundamental of a transistor working while the drive is given to a transistor. Now the same thing if we notice that if we have a motor in place of a LED, the same thing happens. Like for example, at while we operate this, what we find that the motor operates in a particular direction. We have already discussed the direction of the motor rotation based on its polarity. This is the basic fundamental as far as using a transistor for a motor is concerned. We will now watch here the same circuit with the base resistor being given 100k in place of 10k what we have used in the last operation. Now if we try to operate this, what we notice that when we place this, it does not flow. The current does not flow is because the value is so high that the switching action of the transistor does not take place. We even keep it on, the current though flows in this circuit in a very minor current which does not allow the motor to run. But whereas if we take a different transistor, we have taken a Darlington pair, it is called TIP122, it is with technical so Darlington pair, when we operate this, what we find that the motor rotates the same value 100k here, 100k here, but the difference being this transistor requires very little current for the collector current to flow to the emitter. So this is the basic difference between this transistor and this transistor in the circuit. Having understood that, let us see that in place of a resistor, if you use some other item, what happens? We use a component called LDR, this is LDR, light dependent resistor. The light dependent resistor is the re it's a resistance but its value falls when the light falls over it. We will see this that when we operate this and when we increase the intensity of light, this is the intensity of light, we find the current flows and it works. This is what is the LDR, function of LDR and if we reduce the intensity, we find that the motor speed comes down because the sufficient amount of current does not flow here. The same thing happens here. We have instead of uh, intensity, we have put a torch here. Now, if I take the torch close to the close to the device, close to the LDR, you will find that the motor rotates in higher speed. So this is what is how using an LDR, light dependent resistor we call it, the function is achieved. Now having understood that, let us analyze a practical circuit that we will be using for the line following robot. Here we have same, same transistor, in place of the resistor here, what we have done, we have directly connected to a photodiode which is in a reverse connection, we call it a reverse biased condition and the resistance is of course there. The reason being that this being in a reverse condition, when the light falls on this, this conducts and in the process the current flows in the base emitter circuit and the motor will rotate. That is what we will see. Now this is the light, this is an LED which is glowing directly from the supply to a resistor and this light when it falls on this will we'll allow to fall this light on this disc and when we find that this current flows and in the process the motor rotates. This is the basic fundamental of using a photodiode and a LED combination where when the light falls on it, it the current passes through the base emitter circuit, it is base, it is emitter and the process the current flows in the collector emitter circuit. If the light does not fall, 
if this current doesn't flow and this current cannot flow so this is the basic fundamental of using a photodiode and a led in combination where the light falls on this this could be a reflection light it need not be directly falling on this it could be a light being reflected from a flow that's why we kept it in a box and when the light is reflected onto this we find that the motor rotates in that direction and the motor actually gets actuated now let us come to the final circuit here we have two such sections what we have seen earlier one section with one motor other section with another motor being fed from the same battery and we will see how the function is here now while we switch on now while the reflection takes place here this motor rotates while this reflection takes place this motor rotates both the motors rotate in opposite direction is because in a moving vehicle they will be put across a body one in the left and one in the right in the process this kind of operation will make the movement of a vehicle now supposing there are two wheels and the two sides of a vehicle it will move in a forward direction but if one reflection stops for some reason the other motor continues in the process it will try to take a turn similarly if this continues and then this is not getting reflected onto this in the process this motor will stop that means this will take this will take a right turn if this is at the left and this is at the right this will take a right turn and if this is on we find this motor rotates and the motor will take a turn in this way into the left direction final hardware assembly we have an arrangement where the motor will be there and these are the places where the led and the ldr or the photodiode arrangement will be there in between these two of course there is a caster wheel will the third wheel and the motors will be there with the gears and this is what is the arrangement now let us try to understand as to how it works this is the white floor and we have made a black path by drawing in a pen or maybe could be a black tape we have pasted of this nature the led and the photodiode are projecting downwards so as to reflection to take place from the led to the photodiode in this side in this side also the led and photodiode where the reflection of the led is falling on the photodiode and what we are seeing once the reflection falls on this reflection falls on this if there is one motor this side if the one motor is this side both the motors will run in the process the vehicle will move forward as the vehicle moves forward and it when it reaches a place of like this when there is a bend here what happens this reflection continues to be there from led to the photodiode because of the white surface and whereas for this the photodiode is here and led is here and the reflection doesn't take place since the reflection doesn't take place so this side motor stops once this side motor stops this side motor continues to be there and in the process it takes a turn it goes this way and this is how it covers any curved path or any other path depending on the mode which motor is going to stop if this motor stops if this motor stops it takes this side if this motor stops it will take this side so this is what is how a line following robot works we have drawn a path like this using a black paint and then while we try to put it and we'll find how it moves this is how it moves in the direction 